Am I on now? Yes, I am. Okay. So this next uh, gentleman is uh, Juan Altmaier Pizorno. Um, he is from uh, University of Massachusetts and the Amherst uh, lab, and he will be talking about near zero overhead Python code coverage. So hopefully you all enjoy his talk. Thank you. Yeah, like you said, I'm Juan. Oh, there we are. Thanks for your interest. So, if you write, um, I'm not used to hearing so much of myself. Uh, <laughs> if you write a function in Python and you write some tests for it and you get that green bar from PyTest, you know that your tests are, are working, but you still might be missing something. So if you take uh, Ned here's coverage pi and, and run with it, then it would tell you that your tests missed the line. Um, and, and so what is coverage? What is line coverage? Line coverage shows you lines that executed or um, conversely did not execute. It's not the only way to think about coverage. Um, we also have branch coverage. For example, if you took this same example and wrote a different test that covers every line and run with the tool, you see, oh, zero missing, so we got them all. Uh, I have a bit of echo. Could we lower? Yeah, okay. Um, but it's showing that there was one partial branch. What that means is you, um, there was something that didn't execute. What didn't execute? The if never evaluated to false. So let's see, there's a missing else here. It's uh, just an if. So it doesn't show in the lines, but the code never went from the if directly to the return. So branch coverage shows you um, branches taken or not taken. So this is pretty great, pretty good, pretty good way to evaluate your tests. What's the problem with that? Uh, well, it, it can incur in, in a huge amount of overhead. Um, we measured in median 200% overhead uh, using coverage pi. Sorry, Ned. <laughs> and uh, you might think that using, using a JIT would improve this immensely, but we also tried this with PyPy, and uh, that are, it just explodes. PyPy is pretty fast, which makes for a small denominator, which means every little bit blows up in your face. Now, slow tests, nobody likes slow tests, um, but it, they also slow your continuous integration. They, um, might mean less frequent testing and, you know, worse things could happen. Now, if you're paying attention, we were going for near zero. And, uh, in fact, we, we got it down to about 5% overhead for line and branch coverage. And uh, PyPy, not quite that close to zero. We got a 31%. But given that we're coming from 1,600% overhead, uh, that's pretty decent. <laughs> coverage is good for other things than just checking out your tests. You can use to guide fuzzing. So we did a proof of concept integration with, uh, with a targeted property-based testing, kind of like hypothesis uh, guided on, uh, uh, guided by coverage, and it, it ran 22 times faster. It's good for finding dead code because at 5% overhead, you can run it in production. You know, just, just run it all the time. Uh, it's available now, um, and it's been downloaded a bunch of times, so it's some measure of popularity. Actually, it's 106,000 this morning. So this is the executive summary. Uh, in the rest of the time, 26 minutes, um, I'll tell you a little bit about what makes coverage pi slow and how does slipcover manage to do better. So to start off, it's, it's not because coverage pi is poorly implemented. It, <laughs> it, this is a, I'm gonna tell the story a little simplified, but uh, basically it, it uses the tracing API, and see set trace. Um, you define a callback for events, and you set um, 
you enable the tracing, and then as your code reaches the different lines, uh, you trace back it's called, and then it's able to record the, um, the coverage. Now, this mechanism slows down execution even if you're not doing anything in your callback. In fact, we tried, we created a, a, a C a coverage, uh, well, not coverage, but a, a C uh, traceback uh, collector, something that uses this trace in C is almost identical to uh, coverage pies, but doesn't do anything. It just, just is run, exercises the interface. And it took uh, just that, uh, added 130% overhead. So the, the problem is really in the mechanism. So we did a different one to do better. And we wanted, we're looking for a practical tool, not a modified C Python, but something that works uh, out of the box, also with PyPy. So decided to instrument a bytecode. And we didn't find any tool that was uh, really usable, so created our own. And uh, finally, to make the probes, the things that collect the coverage as low overhead as possible, um, decided to write them as, as a native uh, extension module. So how does it work? Um, Python takes your source code, turns it into bytecode. Slipcover takes the bytecode and instruments it. It adds bytecodes, bytecode sequences that are just enough to call into the native extension. Um, so we, we tried this and measured, and it improved performance quite a bit. 170 from 200 is, is not bad, but it's nowhere near zero. So the next idea was to say, well, okay, we care whether a line is reached, usually don't care how often it's reached, so let's just record it once. So in our native module, went there and created a flag. If, you're, if you see yourself coming back, just return. Ta-da, 20%, so this is a huge improvement. And yet, can we do better? So this would have, it's lean below now. How low can you go? But the audio isn't working. So I'm sorry you missed the joke. Well, just a visual joke. So we got our native module probes. We have them ignoring the additional calls. Uh, at this point, to do better, you know, most of what we have is call overhead going back there all the time. So we really need to remove it from the bytecode or somehow avoid those calls to let it run at full speed. Unfortunately, that's not so easy. The code objects in Python, they're read-only. Uh, you can't go and, and just change them. Well, you can, but you're not supposed to. Um, you can, however, make a copy and then uh, update the references to it. Uh, it's, code objects also aren't just one thing, if you have a generator, if you have a, a, um, a list expression, any of those things, uh, they might end up as a tree of, of uh, little code objects. So if we want to replace one, we have to replace the parent as well. Let's say the red ones uh, are ready to be replaced or to be removed, then um, we can remove the little one but then now we have to create another one just for the parent and then before we can actually go and do the last one. And this is even the whole story, the whole thing about finding where the references are is pretty, uh, pretty costly. And costly is the whole mechanism. So we needed something to do this instrumentation a little more efficiently. Um, we decided to try batching and, and um, batching the instrumentation and the instrumentation and also um, make it be triggered by a threshold. So what Slipcover does is every probe, when it, it gets hit, it has a counter. It, um, every time it's hit, it increases the counter until at some point uh, the threshold is crossed. That triggers the deinstrumentation and and just leaves those probes that are needed. That's the they signify or they indicate paths that were never reached before, um, leaving only those behind. So the, put together, this mechanism reduced the instrumentation costs while 
eliminating the overhead. And ta-da, we got down to our 5%. And so that's the name of the project came because the overhead just slips away. Um, <laughs> jokes never end. So I started this work uh, in the what now feels like the dark ages of Python 3.9. Uh, in between Python 3.8 and 3.9, there weren't that many differences in, in bytecode. So, um, but but soon after came by Python 3.10, and Python 3.10 also wasn't that much worse. Although there was a new line table format, so now I had to support two, uh, and the bytecode offsets changed their meaning. Now they mean they're they're words, not bytes, and and so when the first, when I made the first version, uh, it supported 3.8 to 3.10. And then Python 3.11 came with a new line type of format, um, again, with a ton of bytecode changes, uh, inline caching, uh, added, deleted opcodes, things that I used, things that I needed to understand in order to edit. See, when you're inserting those probes, you're not you have to adjust the jump length of every jump that's in the bytecode. There's a bunch of editing you have to do in order to keep the code correct. Oh, 3.11 also added an exception table that also had to be adjusted. So anyway, it was lots of fun. Uh, I brought it out, but at this point I was like, ah, I never intended for this to be my forever job. Um, <laughs> wouldn't this be nice if we had some API or something? And uh, uh, ta-da, in 3.12, um, uh, 3.12 came to the rescue with sys monitoring. I, I heard today there was another talk that mentioned them. Um, sys monitoring should make things like, like slipcover pretty trivial to build uh, because they give you high performance monitoring without having to do all this bytecode editing and things. Uh, in, in fact, uh, our data was used to help show that this was worth doing, that like, we are performance data. So this is a, a copy of an email between Mark and, and uh, Pablo where they were mentioning that. So let's go ahead and try and rewrite slipcover, slipcover using the uh, using sys monitoring. So what does it give you? It allows you to register callbacks for a bunch of events. And you might notice two here that will be significant for coverage. Contrary to sys trace, it, it allows you to enable only what you need. So uh, sys trace, you enable that and you start getting all kinds of events. This is, gives you a lot more control and also allows you to, to disable individual lines or branches or whatever the event is. So not the whole event, but th the occurrence of that event within that part of the code. So let's start by implementing line coverage. To do this, you, the first step is to call something called set to use, set tool ID. So that's about preventing tools from clobbering over each other. Um, then naturally you register a callback. Uh, you're gonna ask for the line event and specify a, a handler function, which then you define. This handler function will receive in, um, in the callback, will, will include the line, the source code line that this is about. Um, and within the handler, you then go ahead and record the coverage. The file name is embedded into that code object in the first parameter. And the, remember how in slip cover the Recording only once dropped the overhead immensely from 100 and something to 20%. Well, here it's, it's important too. Uh, and the way you do it here is by saying, hey, disable this one. It disables only about that line. And then the last step is to request that the event be sent for a specific code object it just takes a little more work to fiddle out instead of just enabling everywhere, but if you enable everywhere, then you lose performance again. And, and that's it. You pretty much got line coverage covered. Um, if you measure performance of this, 
It's pretty amazing. Note that this is just line coverage and coverage pi under Python 3.12. 3.12 is faster than the previous Python, so the overhead from in coverage pi from using syset trace um, shows as a bigger overhead even. Even in those conditions, we had 3%. So, ta-da! <laughs> and now we go out for dinner. Um, actually, <laughs> let's do one more thing. So we got line coverage down. What about branch coverage? So for branch coverage, what you want is to detect this kind of conditional jump. So from the if in line two to that print in line three, or conversely, if that's no one, if that one isn't taken, or which ones were taken from the if to the to line five, um, hopefully you can even detect the ones within the same line, seven to the print, exiting the, the function, those things. And in this coverage, there is a branch event that seems just perfect for that. The callback is, we'll see, it's an, unfortunately not quite as easy to to use. Uh, the callback gives us a code object like the other one. Um, the offset of the jump origin and the, and the offset of the destination um, for the branch. So these are byte codes, not source code locations. So let's see what that means. So if, if we were to compile the example on the left with Python 3.12, we get this code. If we see here, uh, Python the created this byte, created two conditional jumps for the conditional on line two, and then there's one more for the conditional on line seven. Each one of them yields two possible jumps, two conditional jumps. Um, let's go through them one by one, actually just a few of them. Um, the first one, if taken, the pop jump, if false, takes us from offset four to 34. I could here use a feature from that's new in Python 3.11 called copositions. Copositions maps for some position in the, in the byte code, where did that come from in, in the source code? So this is used to give us those nice new, new errors and traceback that show exactly where the error was, not the whole line. Using that, we end up with a branch in the source code that's basically from the A to the print. Now, if that jump isn't taken, um, that's from offset four to six. Essentially, we have a jump from A to B, so continuing the evaluation of that conditional. And if we kept doing this for everyone, we end up with uh, this set of branches in source code. Now. If you look at these branches on the left and those on the right, they're very different, right? You kind of have the actual branches in bytecode versus the conceptual, the ones that you expected. And I'm not saying the ones on the left are bad. In fact, they're more accurate. Um, somebody testing could be really interested if, in, in knowing if, if they ever evaluated B because of short circuiting there, right? If that branch from A to B ever was taken. Um, it's, it's very good for some uses. If you're guiding fuzzing, all you're interested in is knowing if, if you're increasing coverage, for example. But it's harder to make sense of. In fact, uh, this is getting too much in the weeds, but if you're interested in, in what the issues are with mapping this, uh, ask me later. <laughs> and and uh, maybe, uh, it, last for this slide, but certainly not least, if you have more branches, that means if you, you have a lower percent, a percentage in, in your coverage because suddenly you're dividing by a, a much bigger number of branches. And uh, this, could, this is a bit of an unexpected change. If I were to just implement this directly, it could be a breaking change. Now somebody's report to their manager shows 50% coverage instead of 80, right? I didn't want to do that. So instead, uh, what slipcover does, it takes that source code and gets the AST and inserts some phantom lines. Uh, thanks for that name, Ned. 
uh, insert some lines that indicate which branch uh, is being taken. So, for example, uh, the branch from line two to line five, there's an extra little line that is just between the AST and the compiler. And, and when I uh, then, I, and I, I just use line events, I get this line that's encoded that way, that I, I know the branch was taken. I measure performance, and this is line in branch. With SysTrace, we got to 300% overhead, down to 12% with this trick. All right, <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm excited about this. Um, so, where do we go from here? It would be really nice to, to figure out uh, how to use the branch event a little better, uh, how to map it to the source. It's still a bit of a uh, work that's pending. Um, Ned and I have been talking about how can we just get the technology and slipcover, the stuff, and, and bring it into coverage pi. Uh, I will never implement as many features as coverage pi has, and people will want them. So anyway, it was never my intention to create competition. The intention was to improve on, on what we had. If you have ideas, if you want to help, um, let's, let's chat tonight. Um, maybe we can figure out dinner or something. Recap. In summary, slip covers, measures cover real fast. From 3.8 to 3.11 uses all that trickery, the optimized bytecode instrumentation, the instrumentation, and gets it down to, to 5%. From 3.12 onwards, including 3.13, uh, it uses sys monitoring, if, uh, albeit not in the, in the uh, full capacity, using all the features. Uh, it's available now for uh, right on GitHub and on PyPI. Um, if you're interested in chatting tonight, uh, it's an opportunity. Thank you very much. Man, I almost way too fast. I think by the way, sound looks awesome. Um, but coverage.pua also implemented support for sys monitoring. It wasn't clear on your 312 to 312 comparison that you were actually testing it with sys monitoring support on coverage.py. I, I have a, an echo. Somehow I'm hearing a echo, so uh, I couldn't quite Sorry. Coverage.py on 312 also implements sys monitoring as a non default option, and it wasn't clear if that was what was being shown because you mentioned right. uh, Sistrace et cetera, as well. Yeah, um, so, so there is an, an optional uh, core, I think that's what you call it. Yeah, there's an optional core. So uh, these measurements are based on just the defaults. Um, I did measure uh, coverage.py um, with the core and it uses about 9% overhead using 312 or later, right, where sys monitoring is available, uh, for line coverage. However, for branch coverage, uh, there isn't a full implementation, and what's there is, it, 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 it's just not full. It, 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 I measured 2,000% overhead, so it's, I think it's uh, just not, not ready. The, it's not hard to do line coverage anymore because of sys monitoring. Right, so, so uh, certainly coverage pi doesn't need slip cover for that unless you want to backport into the 3.8. Well, 3.8 is almost out, but 3.8 to 3.11. No more questions. Yes, uh, thank you for your interest.